Nerd Lag Game Club. Welcome to the Nerd Lag Game Club podcast, the podcast that gives us a chance to step back and play a game with friends. I'm Corey, and I'm joined with four party members today. Lauren. Hey. Dunza. What's up? Tony. What's going on? And Dan. Hello. Uh, first thing I want to point out is this uh, episode got delayed because of the holiday, so we're sorry about that in advance. Uh, but in this episode of the Game Club, we're trying to figure out how to prevent murders and are playing 2017's The Sexy Brutale. The Sexy Brutale was developed and published by Tequila Works. Tequila Works have developed other games such as Deadlight and Rhyme. I know Lauren's played Rhyme. Yep. Uh, this was our pick for the month of December. Um, it was actually my pick. So I'm going to give a brief summary of the story for Sexy Brutale. Uh, essentially, Sexy Brutale follows a character, and I don't know how to say his first name, so I'm going to call him Boone. And you are going through a mansion, and you are trying to prevent murders, and you unsolve mysteries and unlock new areas of the mansion as you progress through the story and get, like, different items and things along the way. Um, that's pretty a brief summary of it without getting too heavy into spoilers. Um, before we do get in any further, I want to give that spoiler warning. So if you haven't played this game and want to, I recommend playing it before listening to the episode. That, With that being said, who wants to talk about the gameplay and mechanics for the Sexy Brutale? Gameplay was pretty cool. I liked how uh, every time you opened a door, you were in like kind of like a box area. Like, I guess is the best way to describe it. Like, it just like shifted over to where you went, which was pretty cool. Mechanics were all right. I played it on the PC, so I mean, it was fine. Just your normal PC buttons, you know. Yeah, I, I played it on PS4. I think I might have been the only one. No, I played it on the PS4 as well. Did you? Yeah. Um, and I think Lauren and Dan both played on the PC. Yep. yep. Um, so, as what Tony was explaining, basically it's like a top-down, kind of? Yeah, it's like a... Isometric. Yeah. Um, But every room basically is like a 3D render of the room, and then the outs outer rims of the room is black, like, outside of the doors. So you only kind of see one thing at a time. Um, it, as for, like, the mechanics, it's basically just going through the rooms and finding, like, different items and reading about what the items are, and then there's certain items that help you solve the puzzles to, like, move the story forward. Um, as for like actual gameplay, you kind of just move around and each door you have the option to just straight up open it or you can peek through it and see what's in the other room with like very limited vision. Um, and eventually you unlock like a ability to hear like sounds from outside the rooms so you can track movement because you have to watch out for guards and uh, the characters. It's like a Anytime you do with time travel, you can't interact with people. Right. It, it's um, in part, in most ways, it's very much like a stealth game, but not really. Because yeah. there's like no punishment to being like. No, once I figured that out, I just was full sprint mode. The whole yeah, because if, if someone finds you, you kind of just like pot like it, the screen turns like dark and they're like, oh, and it's like there's an alert. But if you just leave the room, you're fine. There's like no like. Yeah, there's no repercussions. Yeah. yeah, I started timing it so if they were gonna come through the door I'm going through, I just go through it. Same. Yeah, there's times where I would just run through the room. I I started like after the first like two, like guess things. I was in full sprint mode because one I I, I was trying to get done, but it was just like the mechanics are easy. Uh, you have a different like you have a couple different things like your pocket watch makes a big difference. You can reset the time back to noon. Yeah, it's essentially you have 12 hours, except for in the first mission. Um, it's Groundhog Day. So essentially yeah. everything that you do during that 12 hours resets. 
except for like very small things. Yeah, and the only way to save like progress is like sinking to the grandfather clock, like clocks. Yeah, which are uh, scattered around the mansion, but you need yeah. uh the keys, the, the wine, wine keys. Yeah. yeah. Um, and your pocket watch also gives you the ability to save at those those grandfather clocks, and you can also skip to four o'clock and eight o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which sometimes that does help because you have to kind of like time things as you like are figuring out these murders and trying to wait for stuff to happen. Um, there's a lot of like downtime. I don't really need it because time goes really fast. Who wants to, I, I like I we keep mentioning the murders, but who who kind of wants to explain like how that works exactly? Dude, I'll give it a shot to try to explain it the best <laughs> I can. There you go, Dan. So, uh, basically, you'll have, in your bottom right corner of the screen, you'll have, like, your time, which it shows, like, a normal clock. And on it, it'll have the guest members' masks to show what time they die at. And you kind of just, for the most part, you would just kind of follow them around in the mansion, like, stealthily to figure out, like, their whole, like, plot where they end up dying at how to prevent them from dying and you kind of have to do kind of puzzle-ish type of things to prevent them from doing said thing or protecting them from said thing yeah it's um very much like you play you typically will play multiple days or like i guess cycles well, cause it's the same day yeah, yeah. Uh, just because you got to see like how each character interacts and moves, um, and then you kind of make a plan from there, and you're like, okay, I need to grab this item, and this item, and then like at one thirty, this guy will be here. I got to make sure I get this item to this room before three o'clock when this guy comes in. Uh, there's a lot. It's very much like you're just observing. And then once you think you've got it figured out, you kind of just make like a mad dash to get everything done. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. It 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 basically lets you know. Yeah, it goes into like a cutscene or or something. You know, once you got to the right like like set part of the mansion. Yeah, the right like solution to so like if you prevented a murder, like it immediately stops. Mm-hmm. It doesn't like just let you roam around like oh it might have helped. Yeah, like there's not like a waiting. You don't have to wait till the murder to solve to, it. So, like yeah, solve it. Yeah. Um. So you're kind of like a detective Groundhog Day, righteous Batman kind of character. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> but basically, I guess the only additional things I'd like to add about gameplay is. You're trying to save all of the guests and you do them like one or two at a time. So sometimes you have to save just one character and then sometimes there's like a duo of characters you have to save, which those ones can be a little more difficult because you're watching two people. Right. Um, and then throughout the mansion, they have playing cards. Yeah, which... they collect. Yeah. Which I didn't really mess with this a whole lot. I I, I got all of them. Really? Ooh, yeah. I 100% in this game. I did not, in in fact. Which is weird, because usually I'm the one that does it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I and if, unless anyone has anything else about like the mechanics of gameplay, I, we could probably move on to art and music. Just, uh, yeah. I would say, once you help a guest, you can gain their mask ability. And then that will allow you to solve more puzzles and interact with more of the mansion. That's true. It like unlocks different areas, abilities. Yeah. Well, like with those abilities, you you are uh-huh. able to like access new parts of the mansion. Like at one point, you can like break the stained glass. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Or um, like light the candles. Right. Yeah. As like you'll progressively start needing more and more things to solve them, which is cool because then it doesn't get all stagnant. Um, but since Lauren hasn't really spoke, how about you, uh, you tell, you bring us into art music. Um, I don't know the best way to describe the art style, but I really liked the music. 
it definitely like fit the game really well. I felt like I was like, you know, in the casino areas, like it felt like you would imagine a casino. I don't I don't really have the best way to describe this, but I did really like the music. That's what I'll say. And I think the uh on top of that, I think the audio sounds for like different things throughout like the mansion. <laughs> Like little footsteps and stuff. You you like notice them. You know what they mm-hmm. are. You're never questioning like what the noise is. For sure. Um, as for art style, I don't really know. It it kind of reminds me of like claymation. It kind of looks like claymation, but it's not. Um, game was developed in Unity, so it kind of gives you an idea of what it may look like. If you ever played Rhyme, it has a very similar art style. Yeah, it's like a cell shaded, like cartoony. They have big ass heads. <laughs> they do have big and then heads. really yeah. realistic faces, which is weird. Oh, I know. Yeah, like their faces are like super detailed. But when, like when we get to like the music part, like you would anytime you interacted with like the bloody girl, it just made me want to play Persona Five. Is that? Oh, it's, yeah. Is that similar <laughs> yeah. music? Yeah, it's that jazz, like... It's like the menu music in Persona. And it's like, mm-hmm. I want to play Persona. Also, there's the part where you're saving, like, the singer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did not expect her to have That's actual cool. voice, like, in, like, same. a three-minute oh song. Oh, my God, same. It was good, though, too. It was good. Yeah, it was done really well. I think sound, it was something that they really focused on. Well, they did, especially with the footstep thing. Like, like in eavesdropping, and like if you would uh, say you were trying to listen to stuff or interact, and like the radio was on, their subtitles wouldn't show up. Uh, yeah, that pissed me off a lot because I'd be <laughs> oh, moving I real it. fast and I forget. Like, damn it! There's actually that part that you use the record player. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. To solve one of the murders, which is cool because you can hear it while you're watching him. You mm-hmm. hear it playing, and he's like, he's playing the piano, and then he stops, and he's like, what the hell is that? Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool, is that you can kind of, like, hear both things, even though you're just peeking through a door at that point in time. Yeah. So I don't know if this was, like, a, a, a thing that just happened, and I just never really paid attention to the sound of music, but For the singer lady, I was in the room while she was like dying and it's like the music always built up if I was in the room with them dying. Like the music, it builds up, builds up and then like as soon as they die, it just like crashes out and I thought that was really nice with the music. Yeah, it's like a crescendo. crescendo. I think that's the the right word. Sure. When the music, (laughs) I think that's the right name. I'm not a music guy. Well, it's when like music hits like its peak and then it just, yeah, it's done like right at the end of that. Um, I will say the murders throughout this game, very good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, They're all just a little bit different, but they're, they're done really well Um, without spoiling too much. Um, and I kind of segue segue her into like the favorite parts or parts that stand out. The very first murder, when you have like half the amount of time, it's mm-hmm. it's so good because the murder yeah, itself the murder itself is so good because the guy um, kills the first character with a gun and you replace his ammo with a blank is basically how you solve the puzzle. Which also draw like I like that you could he's looking through that like safe thing. And you see it and watch it, like, drop. Oh, yeah, the blank. Yeah, like, you hear it and everything. Like, that, there you go. The game, like, sound. They took a lot of time to do the sound right in this game. Um, but during that murder, if you when you successfully, like, save him, the gun doesn't go off. He's like, what the hell? And, like, you hear him, like, reload the gun. He's like, oh, here we go. And he ends up getting a candlestick thrown at him, which kills him. <laughs> I, like laughed out loud when I first seen that. And I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> but uh it, it's just done so well. So that's like that's for me is like the first thing that really drawed me into this game is that like 
it is serious, but at the same time, it also has like a lighter side to things. Yeah, I guess one of my favorite parts would just be like, I just really like the room with the fucking big ass spider in it. <laughs> like a little gardenish type yeah, of like, room, all I the butterflies. Really like and, and then when you're going, like this would be, I guess what my favorite parts when you're going through everything again. Like uh, when the golden mask is like, you know, walking you through everything, yeah. just interacting with them. And it was like talking about how like the one guy that burned to death was like, nah, he probably would want to go out that way. I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> he would want to choose. It? It's like, ah, oh, I think it fits him. He, he, he'd like this. Yeah, he would like this. It's like, why? <laughs> um, Was... Was there anything that stood out for you guys, like Lauren, Tony? I mean, I thought it was done really well. Uh, the puzzles were pretty self-explanatory. You just had to look for the right stuff to find it to solve the murders. I mean, it was pretty good. I went into the game not thinking I wasn't going to like it, and then after the first murder, I was like, all right, I can get into this. This is pretty sweet. Yeah, I think um, the only thing I really struggled with throughout most of this was just timing. Like, just yeah, like remembering waiting. when people were going to arrive at certain times. Um, or what they were doing at said time, or what order I would need to do things in. Um, would get me to, like, struggle at certain points, just because I'm like, okay, where was that guy at again? This isn't so much like when you first start, but like as you get later into it. When you like, do like the whole mansion. Right. And yeah. The mansion's like humongous. I had an issue navigating for a while. I would keep running into the wrong doors or like take the wrong one and then re- try to remember which way I was supposed to go. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, I was in a, I was in speed <laughs> mode, man. You guys were on your way to my house. He was speed running that game. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Then I guess. Um, Lauren, was there any parts that stood out for you? Um, I don't know about standing out besides how much I really liked the music, but there was that one puzzle, um, who was it? It was the two people, and I just had the hardest time with it. Oh, it's where you have to go through and change the statues, and timing for that one was so difficult for me that I ended up looking it up. Oh, yeah, this is the uh, Thanos oh, and I don't remember the what the guy other guy's guy. name is. I don't remember his name, you know. Um, the guy that disintegrated. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to do that one in, like, a certain order. I think, Dan, you actually were talking about this, is where, like, the guy will actually come turn it again. Yeah. Yeah, he tries to turn him to a different symbol because that's what he was told to turn him to. And you have to turn him to a different symbol. Me, I had them all set. Well, I thought I had them all set and I was waiting for them to show up at the area because I didn't realize like it doesn't matter about the time like if you do them all right. And I look up because it shows all of them on the big elevator thing of what symbols are what. And I noticed the one was changed and I was like, this mother... Like... (laughs) fuck this guy for going and switching my stuff man i had to run all the way back but like it was already locked because of the time and so i had to go like a no whole nother cycle of trying to do it yeah i didn't i didn't have too many issues with this one so much i know that uh the the one where he gets electrocuted in like the cage yeah um i kept pulling like the the lever to like the one you have to like pair up with red. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there and I'm like, I know he should be here at some point. So I pulled that lever like 17 times until it finally clicked. <laughs> I was just sitting there and I'm like, man, I must be here super early. That that was a lot of my issue too. was just being places at the wrong time. Right. That's like my biggest struggle. I do like that. The one isn't technically a murder. Oh. Yeah, because she she hangs herself, which is weird, but it's done really well. 
Mm-hmm. And like when you're in that room, there's no music, and you just hear the rope like, yeah. And you're yeah. just like, okay, this is pretty weird. He also like that gold mask guy talks about that one. He's like, I didn't even do anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's um, like, uh, each person struggles with their own battle. I'm like, well, yeah. That that puzzle was a little challenging. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's like the, the only one I had trouble for, with. Yeah, the fish. Like, the fish part's not so difficult. You can kind of just figure that out. It's the secret passage. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you don't see it, then you can't open it, regardless if you knew it was there or not. Um, I think Lauren was actually doing this one when I was in her room with her. Yeah. Um, But I, I think... Overall, like I, I'd like the game, and I think the end is done really well. And I think we should. I, I want to touch base with that because I'm curious of what you guys think. So, oh, okay, I, I, oh, I, I wanted to talk about this. I don't know if, if I got the same ending as everyone else. So that's that's something we'll get to. I but I just up, wanted to. I think you get a different ending if you collected all the collectibles. You do. You get the secret okay. ending if you have all the collectibles. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was anything different or if it was still like the same, but with a little bit of like extra dialogue or anything. So to get into kind of the ending, you. So you save all of the one guest, you go to the basement, and you have to solve this, like, it's like a, it's three puzzles to unlock a giant, like, door. And I felt like these puzzles were the easiest in the whole game. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. most of them are just trial and error. But essentially, you open this big door, you go in this room, and there's just like a guy in, like a like, a tube, like a test tube, basically. He has, like, all these fluids in there. And you're kind of like, okay, what's happening? And um, you escape from there, and you go out into the garden of the mansion, and you find this like random like house on the edge of the property. Um, when you go inside, you meet a woman, and she talks about how her husband always or husband. Yeah. Always looked up to you, like, you know, because you were so mature and you made good decisions. And um, some more progresses. And. All right. I don't know what the order of this is. Do you solve the bomb puzzle first? Before the big before the big reveal. Uh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. So what's, you, what's the big reveal? So, <laughs> but yeah. So you go back and you find the. He's the owner of the mansion, but he has a name. Yeah, Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. But what do they refer to him as? The marquee. The, mar- the marquee. That's what it is. Yeah. Um. So you finally get to his his section. Which this puzzle is super easy to. Um, yeah. So essentially, he had his wife was pregnant, and he wanted to get finally move on from this mansion, and just have a small house and live like he didn't need all this like stuff. So he said, "All right, I'm gonna help. Have somebody help me make these bombs. I'm gonna detonate them, blow up the mansion." And get insurance money is exactly what he goes after. Um, The bomb, however, is mistimed, so it blows up early. um, Which causes, like, the mansion to explode, like, premature. And uh, so you have to solve that puzzle to kind of make sure that the bombs don't blow up incorrectly. Which is very simple. Um... And then this this happens after, right? After gold, the Golden Skull shows you all the murders. Yeah. 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 So he like takes you through that whole course. He shows you like everyone's murder that you just solved. 
and um, you learn about this puzzle, and then you find out that everything that you just did, all these murders, are not real. None of this actually happened. They all died in the explosion from the bomb. In this scene, you see that Lucas jumps out the window and survives. Which, which, whenever you're just playing the game, if you go out in the garden and you wait long enough, his body will fly and fall into the garden. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you would try to like examine it and it'd be like, oh, something fell from the clock tower. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> um, so essentially that happens. And... Then you go back to the room with the tubes after the mansion's on fire. Yep. And you find out that da 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 big reveal that you are also Lucas. And, and also and also Goldface. And also the guy in the okay. tube. <laughs> and also <laughs> is he a fifth one? All the guards. Oh well, yeah, uh, you're. <laughs> you are everything that you've been running from. You, you is you. Yeah. You're the crater of the mansion. Um. And basically, this is where you find out that this has been your way to deal with guilt. Because you were the only person that survived. Right, and you killed mansion. all the guests and all your, your wife. friends. And your wife. And your unborn baby. And your unborn baby. Everyone died. And you made up these stories to help you feel better. Even though watching feel them. Worse. Well, yeah. Okay. You feel worse because you're like, you want yourself to punish. You like, you're trying to punish yourself. Mm -hmm. And your wife's kind of the bloody girl. You find out is your wife. Oh, she, Lord. And she says, Hey, stop punishing yourself. Like, we forgive you like move on like it's been forever um and then your gold face version comes over and says hey no you still deserve to punish yourself like you need to keep reliving this and uh it gives you the option to relive it and like continue through like just reliving the same 12 hours or you can move on so in that case i'd like to know did you guys click i uh, move on i i did move yeah. on move i clicked on. to stay because i had to still get all the invitations and the playing cards <laughs> <laughs> you nerd <laughs> um and outside of that i know dan has a different ending i did watch it but i will let you talk about the the other ending was that it for like the normal ending yeah yeah yes. yep well it ends with you at the graves oh it ends with you at the graves okay um so basically there was a key in the game where it was like the key of the i don't remember the name of it of like unkept secrets or something something stupid like that and uh, you would open it up in the casino, and the devil would be like chained up, it's like a demon. And you would have, yeah, demon, devil, whatever. He'd want uh, all of the playing cards. Whenever you get there, he'd basically tell you that you you should stay there with him, and because he kind of gave you all this, some, something along those lines. And then it goes to you at the at at the front room of the mansion and you kind of walk into the next room, which is the room that like leads into the garden, like with the big window. And there's just like a band of yous playing instruments. All your guests are just like dancing, having a fun time without uh, their masks on. And you can go around and you like talk to everyone. And they have like little dialogues talking to like each other. And then you'd walk up to the back window and you'd shatter it and then it'd just go to the credits. Everyone would stop playing, the music would stop. They'd all pretty much like you, stare at you. You were the one jumping out the window when you shatter the window then. I think essentially what the idea is is that the demon at some point tells you you don't have to choose. You don't have to keep reliving it, you don't have to move on, you can just stay here. 
So I don't know what breaking out of the stained glass yeah. window like represents because I didn't get that ending. But from what I've seen, essentially, he just says, you don't have to pick anything. Yeah. 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 So, but going back to the ending, I personally did not see that coming where he was everyone in the mansion. No, I did not either. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, but I figured the bloody girl was yeah. the deep yeah. wife. Right. Yeah. She hints that kind of through her dialogue throughout the game, but right. when they like reveal to you that it's like, I'm you, and you're me, Lucas. and that guy's also well, you. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird because everybody calls you something else, and like, but you're looking for Lucas the whole time, and you're like, what? I figured he was the golden mask guy, but like I didn't think. <laughs> I mean, I was half right. Yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting. Like, they kind of just throw it at you, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Um, but I just did. Like, I mean, it seemed like we're all on the same page. We didn't really expect him to be like five different people, and all the guards and everything. But I, I think it's um an interesting concept that. The game is essentially it's played in is is like subconscious. Yep. So I I think that was done pretty interesting, and uh, I different take on kind of like games in general. So overall, I I I feel like it was a good experience. Um, let's move into time to completion. So how long did this take everyone to finish? Uh, it took me about three and a half hours. Like I said, I ran through it. Like I was trying to go fast. I think I was a little over four hours. Like four and a half hours, almost five. All right. Five point three hours. Nice, Dan. What do you have? Like fifteen hours in this? Whoa! I didn't have that <laughs> many. I had seven. <laughs> Seven. Only seven yeah. to complete it fully. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, it was like on Steam it says seven point one, but pretty close to seven. So relatively short experience. I think the average for this game was around seven hours just for the main story. So I we we finished it much sooner than the average player. So it's pat yourself game. on your shoulders. Yeah. Um, built different built different uh, <laughs> the last part for this episode is recommendation um so starting with lauren uh would you recommend this game and why or why not yeah um i like the music i like the art style and i thought the gameplay was interesting even though i was frustrated for a little bit of it but i think that's the charm of a puzzle game Tanza. Um, like always, I would recommend it. it. I don't know what it, it if it's expensive or anything now, but I mean, for a good five to six hour gameplay and uh, you know, just solving puzzles, good soundtrack, uh, a better story than I kind of expected. At least a good. I like the ending, the way it wrapped up. So yeah, I would for sure recommend it, especially if you're into anything obscure. Tony. You know, I like I said earlier, I went into the game thinking I wasn't going to like it because I really don't care for puzzle games, but uh, it was actually pretty fun. Yes, I'd recommend it. And Dan? Yeah, I'd recommend it. It was it was always, like, a, not thrilling, but it was, it was I, I don't know words. Satisfying. Satisfying. Thank you, Tony. Satisfying yeah. whenever you'd, like, complete, like, the uh, the murder. You'd like solve it after taking you like quite a while to figure it out. Yeah, I would also recommend it. Uh, a little different than what I thought it was going into it. Um, but I think the puzzles are challenging enough that it's not super easy. Um, you have to kind of think about what you're doing, but once you figure it out, it's like super satisfying. Um, so yeah, for a five, six hour game. It, 
I mean, I wouldn't pay like an absurd amount of money for this, but if it's like less than 20 bucks and you like puzzle like games I'm, with a good story, I, I, I definitely bought, recommend it. I bought this game when it came out, I think for 20. So I can't imagine it's more it's, than that, right? It's 20 bucks on Steam right now, but I bought it during a Steam sale for, I think, like seven or less. Same. Same. I bought it whenever you guys told me to buy it and it was on sale. It was like, it could be more than like eight bucks. Yeah, I, I think that eight to ten dollar range. If you're not sure, um, I think that's a perfect range. I, yeah, right. I think that's, yeah, that's a great thing. It's like I said, the story's good, gameplay's fun. Um, it can be frustrating at times, but you just kind of have to work through it. Um, sit back, kind of look and observe, which is basically the concept of the game. Um. But with that being said, is there anything else anyone wants to say about the Sexy Brutel? Nope. I'm good. Play it. Play it? Yeah, right. play it. So, Lauren has the game pick for the month of December. Um, so how about you lay it on us and tell us what we're playing for the month of December? Alright, we're playing Tearaway Unfolded for the PS4. Um... I've played the game already once. I absolutely loved it the first time I played it, so I want everyone else to... This is my way of forcing you guys to finally play it. Um, <laughs> there's not a ton about the story without actually playing it. You play the main character, your goal is to l deliver a message. I mean, that's that's your goal. That's it. Wow, um, mailman game, let's go. <laughs> yeah, train yeah. up my alley. Yeah, do hell it. yeah. 60 it's, hours a week. Yeah. It's the art style is like construction paper almost. I think that's kind of what they went for. It's media molecule. They made Little Big Planet. They made Dreams. They're a studio that's known for doing interesting things with what they do. They usually don't miss the mark. So that's what that's what we're playing yeah, and it's uh it's a little more on the expensive side everywhere else but we grabbed an extra copy at family dollar for eight bucks for whoever needs it yeah i already have it i will need it so the only thing and... <laughs> go ahead only thing else i want to add about um tearaway is that it is a platformer kind of yep yeah, it is. So it's our first platformer, I think. I don't think we've played any on the podcast yeah. so far. Was Flipping Death not a platformer? Yeah, I would say it's more of a puzzle it's... game. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, but, alright, cool. I'm excited to play Tearaway um, since I've been pushing it off for so long. Um, but stick around for some plugs. But before we go, we wanted to share where you can find us online. First, we have a YouTube channel called Nerlag where we're uploading some great content, so make sure to subscribe for the latest videos. We have a Facebook page at Nerdlag Game Club. Make sure you like that page so you can get all the latest news about the podcast. You can also find us on Twitter at Nerdlag Game Club, where we share some of the latest gaming news that we find interesting and amazing. And lastly, we have a Discord at Nerdlag where you can talk to us in voice chat and even join in, in some of the games we're playing. So if you have any interest in that, ask us for an invite. We want to thank everyone that tuned in for this episode. And if you enjoyed, make sure you share it with your friends and follow us on Spotify. It really helps us out. Back to the episode. On to the final credits. Is there anything that anyone wants to talk about in the gaming side of things? What have you been playing? What news have you heard? Anything like that? I haven't been playing anything, man. I, I barely got this game finished this month with how busy we've been at work. I feel it, man. It's It's been the holidays is rough for us. Yeah. But uh, I... the, the only thing I heard in the gaming industry is that we finally got it. I mean, well, it did, it came out since um, the last time we recorded. So um, we we got a release date for day after. It is coming out in June this yeah. year. Yeah, I did see that. 2022. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for that. 
other than that, I, I I have not caught up or been up to date with any gaming stuff. Um, uh, we played through Pokemon. I mean, Dan and well, Lauren didn't quite finish it yet, or tons of. <laughs> Did you finish it, Tony? Have you even played it? <laughs> Dude, I played it like the day I got it for a couple hours, and I haven't touched my Switch since. I haven't had time. That's fair. Um, but I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, kind of burned through that in like a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Halo came out. Well, the multiplayer, and then and now that we're recording this, Halo comes out tomorrow. Hell <laughs> yeah! This podcast a little bit, but the campaign will be out tomorrow. I think since this, I mean, I played Forza for a while, made a bunch Which of one? anime cars. Uh, Cindy one five. It's good, man. It's got your soup. Well, I don't know if it's got your soup. It your it has the STI. I did see that. Yeah, it does have the STI. One, and I put some anime girls on it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, like I said, it, between holidays and then everybody's job has picked up. So yeah, yeah. Played as much as we'd like. Yeah, I know Dan's been playing some Halo Infinite multiplayer. Yeah, and I've also been playing Minecraft since that uh, new update came out recently. Minecraft. Minecraft. He's a cow farmer. Uh, yeah, basically just been a cow farmer. Slaughtering <laughs> cows. Wow. <laughs> All right. No speed running? No, 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 I'm not good enough of that. We played a little bit of Battlefield. We did oh, yeah, we should do that a little again. bit of Battlefield. Yeah, I'll play it. Yeah, you guys Maybe said it was free, right? It's really yeah. like there's a ten hour free trial. Yeah. Ten hour free yeah. trial. If you we have did, EA I access. Three hours. I do have EA access oh, on the floor. Right. Yeah, there you go then. We'll have to check that out You're again. I like just sniping. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it. I think they patched where you can actually revive people now. Oh nice. Well, you don't have good. that problem. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they've been working on it like a lot. There was so many bugs. <laughs> well, we also played it be- technically before, before the game, it released. Like, fully yeah. release. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's pretty yeah. much for me. Anything else you guys want to talk about? I posted on our Spider Man movie. Oh, yeah. So excited. Oh yeah, that comes out soon too. Yeah, the eighteenth, I think. Like that. Never saw the second Spider-Man movie. Yeah, so. we we gotta watch that. So that's our <laughs> that's yeah. our plan. Yeah, I we think me it. and Ruby are gonna go see it whenever whatever day I have off that week. Uh, into the or across the Spider Verse trailer just dropped. Oh, for the 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 anime the one? animated one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I've been recording uh, you like. Well, trying to bring back the YouTube channel with weekly gaming updates and stuff. And uh, that's basically all we've been anything new I've been up to. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been tough. This December is always rough. So, yeah, uh, we'll keep our, you know, we'll keep doing the podcast for sure. We'll get that done. Um, Maybe we'll figure out a game for in between, maybe. Uh, But. I think that's about it. So it's time for us to install the next game and get ready for the next episode. So thanks for listening, and we will see you guys for the next one. All right. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.